The first record of Filipinos on American soil was in 1587 when Filipinos serving in the Spanish galleon trade joined a Spanish landing party in Morro Bay, California. The first Filipino settlement began in 1763 when a group of Manila men jumped ship and settled in Louisiana. And in fact there is, uh, I, have not, I have been in Louisiana but I was not able to see the place uh, about uh, a street named Manila. But in Washington, D.C., they have uh, a place honoring the Philippines. And so that is also a pride that the Filipinos, it means that the Filipinos, are, they go anywhere where they find life. But it was not until the Philippines became an American colony that large numbers of Filipinos crossed the Pacific. The United States government began an education program in 1903 where Filipino students were brought to America to be trained in American ideals. Once they graduated with their advanced degrees, the majority of these pensionados returned to work in the colonial government. Though hundreds of these students came to America, they were just a trickle compared to the stream that would follow. By the turn of the century, white Americans had come to fear Asian immigration. Though they had once recruited Chinese, Japanese, and other Asians to work in the West Coast, fear of the Yellow Horde led to racist exclusionary immigration laws. Filipinos were then actively recruited to compensate for reduced East Asian labor. In the first 20 years after the 1907 Gentlemen's Agreement prohibited Japanese immigration, 150,000 Filipinos came to the United States. Especially in California, because that's where we live before. Uh, we, we, they are called the Manongs. Manongs are the elderly, and they are the old folks, retired ones who came to the United States to, to work. And uh, they go to, especially in Hawaii, they work in a sugar plantation, in pineapple plantation, and they, they become they became farmers. They work in the field. They live. Uh, they work in factories. They work in fisheries, especially in Alaska. These manongs are not afraid to work. They uh, work in vineyard and um, picking up uh, grapes. So they did all in Stockton. California, we have the so-called Manongs also, because these are old-timers. Since Filipinos came from an American colony, they were not aliens and prohibited by immigration law, nor were they eligible for citizenship. They were considered nationals, which meant they could not be kept out, but they would not be integrated into American society either. In the sugar plantations of Hawaii, the asparagus fields of California, the Alaskan fisheries, and in hotels across America, Filipino men came seeking work in the Promised Land. Groomed by American teachers in the Philippines who preached democracy, equality, and English, many early immigrants were shocked by the bitter racism they encountered. Regardless of their education, many of the Filipinos were forced to work in back-breaking jobs for low pay and live in filthy conditions. Unlike the Japanese or Chinese, they had no government that would speak for them. Today, these early immigrants are called Manongs, the Ilocano term for older brother a testament to the fact that most of them came from the Ilocos region and the Visayas. Almost all of them were young men who came thinking they would make it rich and return home. Instead, they found racism and deplorable working conditions. With their English skills, most worked in the service industry as janitors and bellboys, or as agricultural workers. Though a few tried to find wives from their homeland, many Filipinos with their multi-ethnic heritage married outside their race. This led to laws forbidding marriages between Filipinos and white women. The Great Depression made the racism and poor working conditions even worse. As one Filipino immigrant said, times became harder when laborers from the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma came to California in search of work. They had to compete with the Filipinos for stoop labor jobs like cutting asparagus, picking onions, or cutting sugar beets. One night in 1929, or 1930, they started bombing the Filipino Federation building there. The guys who threw bombs from their cars continued to El Dorado Street where the Filipinos were. They wanted to drive out Filipinos who were working in the shed house. One Filipino was taken from the camp and beaten. Anti-Filipino feeling contributed to Philippine independence as it was impossible to prohibit their immigration unless they were aliens. 
In 1934, the Tidings McDuffie Act passed, declaring the Philippines a commonwealth, and Filipinos were reclassified as aliens, and immigration was limited to 50 Filipinos a year. The next year, Congress passed an act to provide means by which certain Filipinos can immigrate from the United States, known informally as the Filipino Repatriation Act. Proponents of the act declared that the Great Depression had caused many Filipinos to become unemployed and consequently unable to afford the return trip home. In reality, many white Americans on the West Coast wanted Filipinos to no longer compete with white labor. Regardless of the motivation, the act had little impact. Just over 2,000 Filipinos returned to the Philippines. Filipino immigrants continued to cling to the possibility of a better life in the United States.